In our last video, we were discussing why costs were so high. And we know that with the inability to tailor our health insurance policies to our needs, like we do with auto insurance, that premiums for health insurance are higher than we would like and could be lower. And it provides a barrier to people to come into the system or purchase health insurance. Now, we also mentioned that competition is a barrier to lowering cost in health care. But how do we know competition works? Everyone says health care and medicine is different. It can't work. Let me give you an example in my field, LASIK eye surgery or refractive surgery. When refractive surgery was first introduced in the, in the United States about 10 to 12 years ago, the cost was about 5000 per eye. As people adopted the procedure and had good results, the cost started to come down because the volume increased. The volume of patients receiving treatment, I mean. Then we had bargain providers come in. The bargain providers came in and offered uh, laser vision correction for six or seven hundred dollars per eye. Of course, it varied. That was only the teaser rate to get you in. Now, currently, the price for laser vision correction is about eighteen hundred to two thousand per eye across the country. So the price has settled where the majority of people feel it's reasonable to pay for that service. If price is your only consideration, people will search and find lower cost. However, if you feel that there's a certain value or quality from a different provider, you may be willing to pay a little bit more for the procedure. But if the competition is geared to providing value to you, the patient, and you're paying out of your pocket, as you do with LASIK, then we know that competition works and will drive down cost and also increase value to you, the consumer of healthcare. Another example of this is what's happened with Medicare Part D. Although Medicare Part D was unfunded, and initially before the program was even voted for, the cost had escalated, it has come in under budget at $386 billion for the 10-year period from 2004 to 2013. Those are the current estimates. Also, by this year in 2009, the monthly premium for Medicare Part D or drugs was estimated to be $44 per month, but it is actually $27 to $28 per month now. So the monthly premium cost is also lower. Now, we could say that this is a single payer system because it's paid for by the government. However, it's not administered by the government. It's administered by private companies who are competing with each other for seniors to access their company profile for their medications. And every year, seniors can look at their medications and compare cost. And a whole new innovative industry has been set up to allow seniors to compare cost, both within pharmacies, over the internet, and through programs put on by other nonprofit agencies, such as AARP. And seniors have become very adept at searching for and obtaining the lowest cost they can for their medications. But this is precisely because there is competition that's across state lines that's easily accessible to all seniors and they can get the help they want through other innovative companies that have arisen in order to meet this need. So competition in healthcare, if it's aligned to give value to the patient, works very well in both reducing cost and increasing quality and service. So why don't we have competition in healthcare? The primary reason is because we don't pay the bill. So if we're not paying the bill, we may see what the actual amount is that we're charged or an insurance company is charged, but we don't pay the full charge. And since we're not paying the full charge, we're not demanding that costs are brought down, nor are we searching through providers or hospitals or institutions for the lowest cost. For instance, if you and your provider discussed you had a condition that required you to have or would benefit if you had an MRI, the insurance company or Medicare reimburses the same amount for the MRI, regardless of where you go. So you could call different institutions, but the cost for the MRI would be the same. Wouldn't it be better if your policy were tailored and you had monies in your health account, your individual health account, that was pre-funded or pre-credited if you were low income 
and was a tax deduction if you were higher income. And you could call around and find out the cost of an MRI. And if you wanted to pay more for better quality, you could do so. But if price was the major concern, you could have the lower price. And if you didn't want to spend money on an MRI at all, you could tell your physician or your provider or discuss with them what happens if I don't have this procedure done or this test done? What's the benefits to having the test? And what are the shortfalls or the detriments, the risks, if I don't have the procedure done? And you and pro your provider could have a frank discussion over why the procedure should be done, how it benefits you, and what's the risks if you don't have something done. You could also determine how often you wanted to, to visit that provider and if the provider provided a value to you. Now, aren't you the best person to determine the value that you may be provided by an individual? The government's going to assess value by certain parameters. We call them evidence-based medicine, but they're really bullet points. So a good provider already does those things and is not going to get paid anymore. And a poor provider can do those things but be, still be paid the same as a high quality provider. There's no difference between how those two are paid. So a low quality provider and a high quality provider are paid the same amount regardless of the value of what they deliver to you, the patient. Even in single payer systems such as Canada and Great Britain with top down control, costs are still rising and there is no competition in those systems to provide value to the patient. So we know top-down control does not control cost as Great Britain is changing their system and the government of Canada is now morphing into a private system as well as their single-payer government controlled system. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact me on my blog, my Facebook, or my Twitter. And let's continue this conversation in the next video when we talk about prevention and electronic medical records. Thank you.